Hello, I'm Bo Lonerdal and I'm at the Department of Nutrition and I also have a joint appointment at the Department of Internal Medicine at University of California at Davis. And in this clinical pearl I will be discussing the milk fat globule membrane. And you may wonder what the milk fat globule membrane or MFGM for short uh, really is. Uh, it's not a very familiar term for most people. We found out uh, several decades ago when we were characterizing the proteins in breast milk that a small but significant fraction of the proteins were not in the skim milk but they actually these proteins were found in the fat fraction and when we split up the fat fraction we found that there is a fraction consisting of membranes. It's actually three membranes that surround the fat or the triglycerides in milk. So that when milk is secreted, these membranes uh, surround the lipids and help it to get out in the milk and keep that lipid in suspension. This is common in all species. So even cows, of course, have this milk fat globule membrane. And it's remarkably similar to the human one. There are some differences, but largely they are similar. The, the membrane consists of phospholipids. And these phospholipids also contain gangliosides, uh, sphingomyelin is in there, uh, the carbohydrate sialic acid is bound in there, cholesterol is in the membrane, but also bioactive uh, proteins are in there. And we have found that there are more than 100 different proteins in this milk fat globule membrane fraction. Many of them are unique for the MFGM. So they're not found in the whey or in the casein fraction or in the, in the skim milk. And when infant formula is made, you're usually mixing skim milk powder with whey protein. And these are protein fractions. The cow's milk fat is usually separated because since about 50 years ago, uh, infant formula doesn't contain milk fat. It was considered at that time not to be beneficial to infants and instead mixtures of vegetable oils are used today. So therefore there is no or has not been any MFGM in infant formula. However, uh, Today, the dairy industry can isolate this MFGM fraction. And there are some companies in this world now that have the MFGM commercially available. And we were interested and did a study in collaboration with one of these dairy companies, Arla in Denmark, where we first gave it this MFGM fraction to older infants in Peru. The reason we did it in Peru was that you have, of course, a lot of gastrointestinal infections there. They're very common because of poor hygiene in the outskirts of Lima in particular, but there are many poor areas. And we did a study there where we, in a double-blind fashion, gave 6 to 12-month-old Peruvian infants the MFGM or skim milk powder in a blind fashion every day for six months. We also gave them micronutrients to make sure that uh, they were not lacking micronutrients in the diet. So we added the MFGM to their complementary food in the mid-morning and mid-afternoon. And the major outcome of that study was that we found significantly less diarrhea, particularly bloody diarrhea, in the infants that got the MFGM daily. So this not only showed that it was safe, but it also showed that it had a beneficial effect when it comes to preventing diarrhea or gastrointestinal disease. Uh, we then moved on, and I did a study together with a colleague in Sweden, uh, Dr. Hernell, where we added the MFGM to a Swedish infant formula. It was a relatively large study where we had uh, 80 breastfed infants as a comparison. And then we gave standard formula to 80 infants, and then we had the experimental formula which contained the MFGM to 80 infants. We gave it from about four to six weeks of age up to six months, and then we very carefully registered, of course, growth, morbidity, etc. 
We also, at 12 months of age, that is six months after they had received this formula, we investigated uh, their cognitive development using the Bailey 3 test. We had two major outcomes of the study. First, we found that they had those that got the MFGM had significantly less infections as judged by a prescription of uh, anti-fever medications, but also significantly uh, fewer otitis media episodes. And in that sense, they became uh, similar to breastfed infants. Those that received standard formula had more otitis media and more prescriptions of anti-fever uh, medicines. We also found that the cognitive development of those infants that had received the formula with the MFGM was significantly better than those that received standard formula and there was no difference to breastfed infants. And this is the first study where you've been able to mimic the performance of breastfed infants by adding a component to infant formula. And we've been very encouraged uh, uh, by that, and we are doing long-term follow-up study of those infants also. So overall, a reduction of infection and improved cognitive development. Uh, we don't know what in the MFGM is causing these things. Uh, there may be different components causing the different outcomes. We don't know that yet. So more basic and applied research is needed on this MFGM fraction for sure. Also the, the MFGM fractions from different companies vary in composition and we don't know again if other manufacturers MFGM would behave the same way. So comparative studies are definitely needed. I should also mention that uh, we didn't see any adverse effects in our study in Sweden, but one study has uh, observed more eczema uh, in those infants that got a, uh, an MFGM fraction added to it. It was not the same MFGM as we added, and also it was a smaller study. The, uh, eczema here was self-reported, that is the parents reported it, there were no physicians, which really needs to be done when it comes to allergy and eczema. So this needs to be explored further. We have reanalyzed all our data and we did not see any significant differences in any type of rash or eczema between the infants that got the MFGM and those that got standard formula. So we did not see it in our larger study. But it's something to keep an eye on and further studies certainly will look at uh, this outcome also. But overall, uh, MFGM seems to be a very promising component and we are closing one of the gaps between infant formula and breast milk by adding this in, in my opinion. And I think that is a step forward. There are many things that are difficult to copy from breast milk, but this may be at least one component where we can attempt to make it more similar. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching this Clinical Pearl uh, video on pediatricnutritionce.org. Thank you.